hear a guy say black power, it's whatever. But if you hear a dude say white power, you're like, hold on. What do you mean by that? Right? It's like, and it's it's one of those things where, you know, different people, you know, represent groups for different reasons. But the, the problem is that I can give you that answer for that. And I can give you that answer for everything else. But when you take all of it collectively, at some point, it doesn't matter anymore. It just sounds like, well, it just sounds like you fucking hate white people. That's what it sounds like. So, mm. yeah, they're like, I think everybody here knows when you hear somebody say white power, there's something else going on there as opposed to like black power no, of course, or Hispanic power. But, yeah. but like, but yeah, I agree that like when you have that excuse for every single issue, like why is it okay to say fucking kill all white people, but I can't deal with black people. When you have that excuse for every reason, it looks bad. And I think that's where the left's kind of like lost control of the narrative and the optics and everything. Yeah, I just look at it like if, if you wanna, if you want to end racism, then it's got, then everyone's gotta be held to the same standards, sure. my thing. Like you can't sit there and say, uh, black power, then a white dude goes ahead and says white power, and you're like, oh, well, you're a racist when you're pretty much saying the same shit. I've heard them say terrible things like, oh, yeah, we need to attack white people, take this shit back, and no one really bats an eye. For like, sure. it's crazy to me that, like, Black Lives Matter is not designated as a domestic terrorist organization because they fit the profile 100% according to FBI definition. You know? Trying but to play if Minecraft you have, like, a white militia like, group, I don't they're definitely going to go loads. on that. Uh, so I look at it like, listen, like, you know, you look at the Justice Department. Um, what does Lady it, Justice have? Uh, like, right? She has a blindfold and she has much. two scales. Justice like. is supposed to be blind. That's Would you ever want to like fight so the Ender like, Dragon like, again? Go ahead yes. And say, this is racist on one side. It's got to be racist on the other side too. That's all I'm saying. Okay. The way to defeat racism is through equality, but it's got to be. It can't be selective. Yeah, Twitch went through that a couple months ago. There was a huge ordeal where some people wanted to defend calling white people cracker. <laughs> And it blew up into a huge Crazy. thing, and like I was surprised Twitch actually started banning people for it. It's like this is a little bit wild, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, not not a good look, I would say. Yeah, it's just it, like I said, it's, it's just wild to me how like you can be racist to white people, but if they say anything about like a, a protected class, it's considered you're racist. Because you're, yeah, because you're punching down. Yeah. and you are you're systemically oppressing somebody, and blah blah. Yeah, there's like all these reasons why you can't make fun of somebody else, but these people will like go after your throat for everything. Exactly. They'll try to like they'll go after your job, they'll go after your income, they'll go after like your online presence, they'll get you banned, kicked out of your apartment. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, seriously, they did it. They try to do it to us, and it's like, because and, and we're and we're colored, so it's like, then they'll say, oh, well, you guys are black, like, uh, you you can't make comments on the black community because you guys aren't black. And it's like, okay, bro, uh, we're gonna use this fucking example again. Yo, so. could you imagine if we were white, saying what we're saying now? Oh yeah, we would have been canceled. canceled. They would have been. Uh... And it's funny because like, yes, the white, the white man's common common enemy now, but like, it's just our turn because what happens is right, like, no one's safe, like. No, it's white man. It could be the Spanish man next. It just depends, bro. So nobody's safe. Yeah, yeah, well, and, and like... it's gonna, and it's gonna. I've always said it. The left continues to eat itself. So it, yeah. it starts with Caucasian men. It's gonna start to progress. Yeah. It's gonna get to a point where it's gonna be like, all men are trash. Only women, and you need to be purple haired and three hundred pounds, and you need to be the most woke, etc. Like, it, it, like all the as the years pass, becoming uh, left becomes more and more extreme. Mm. So. so it's like there's like the comic with the there's the guy standing with like ten people in front of him, and then there's the um the bolt not the bolt. Or what's the flattening thing? The oh, the, the steamer, like yeah, it's like a roller, roller. it's like a roller, roller yeah. yeah, behind him, and it's like yeah. just crush the last person. It's like, okay, I think we've gone far enough now, yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's coming for him next, yeah, yeah. exactly. That's kind of what happened to me, going. I guess. Yeah, so that's basically, I'm one of the flattened dudes. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, uh, you know, shout out to Tim Pool, I always use him as, as an example. 10 years ago, right, 10, 10, 12 years ago, around 2010 ish, he would be considered like a flaming liberal. Now it's like he's a raging conservative, you know, and that's just goes to show you just in the span of 10 years how much we've like went off the fucking rails as far as like being woke and being politically correct and people's feelings and all this other crazy shit so yeah it's funny because yeah. like the three of us like you're did you vote for trump i didn't vote you didn't vote but you would consider yourself a trump supporter bro he don't even watch american movies <laughs> <laughs> well it's just funny that we're at the same time <laughs> if you were a trump voter you'd immediately be labeled all right but myron and i both voted for trump and like they can't use the same terminology I will admit, I didn't vote, but if I could, oh, you didn't vote. I didn't vote, but I, if I could, I will vote for him. And if he runs again, if they don't pull some bullshit, why couldn't I will vote? Because you vote work for the government. Well, in 2016, oh, when was I in 2016? I was, uh, oh, I was registered to vote, to vote in Connecticut. Oh, so it didn't matter. My vote is useless. Oh, okay, yes, yeah. yes, in 2016, I was registered in Connecticut. So that's a big, uh, yeah. yeah. So the What's elephant up? in the room is Andrew Tate good for for the guys or not, in your opinion, and why? I'd say absolutely not. Okay. Okay. Well, why is that? I think that the I think that the idea of masculinity and success and fulfillment that's being sold by a lot of people on the right, I think, leads to the same type of spiritual wasteland that you're trying to like pull these young men out of. I would say, like when I look at somebody like um, Andrew Tate, or even like for you guys, or and anybody that talks about red pill stuff, it always feels like your big markers for success are how many women can you get, how much money can you make, what kind of cars do you drive. 
And at the end of the day, I just, I don't know how old you guys are, but like when I think back to the things I've had in my life, like I don't like remember the third, you know, new iPhone I got. I don't remember like when I got my new car, like how it was cool for like a week, but like there are memories that you make with other people. There are things that you achieve or accomplish in your life. For me, maybe stuff related to music, maybe stuff related to gaming when I was in esports. Like these are the standout memories that I have, but I never hear anybody in like the Red Pill Society building towards that. It always feels like they're building towards like the most hollowed existence that you possibly could have as a man that gets like signed off by mainstream consumer society. You've applied that a lot to me, but I've never even really talked about that. And it, sure. even if I do, I want the ability to buy those things. It's not those things are gonna make me happy. I just wanna have the power to not be restricted by anything. Yeah, but I guess the, the argument that I always make is that if you spend all of your life trying to get the capability to have everything, right? Like a man who spends his whole life on the mission, once that mission is fulfilled, he has nothing. Because your whole life you've just spent trying to get stuff right and, and you haven't worked on building relationships building friendships accomplishing something real um all, like the best the best type of advice you get from red pill is at least working out as, as long as you're doing it for yourself and not to impress a chick but like because building your body means something so right? you don't you think we should tell people to get money i don't know i don't think that's that important i think that there are like upgrades to your life you can make if you're making fifteen thousand a year and you live with your mom and dad yeah you need to up your money of course but like if you've got a decent job and and i've seen this as a millennial there's a lot of people from my generation who are sitting in their apartment making one hundred forty thousand a year doing work from home who fucking hate themselves they have no friends except for the ones that they see light up on discord they have no hobbies except for the four thousandth game of league of legends they play for the day and they have like no fulfillment in their life they have nothing and then these are the types of people that go online like how do i meet girls how do i meet friends like why is it that i've hit every big marker in my life but i'm fucking miserable and i think that that void isn't being answered by anybody i think right now would you admit right that life is about experiences yeah for sure so if i'm a guy living in this world today when they want the best experience possible absolutely so if i'm telling guys to be better and become better themselves and experience more things in life i want to have the best in life for example nicest cars nice lifestyle because that does breed experiences now i get what you're saying mm -hmm. most guys may not get to that marker and they may be miserable on the journey but we're just saying look if you live on this earth right now how do you improve how do you become better because that is the only way you can actually have purpose in life becoming better i agree with you but we're almost begging the question having the best experiences the best type of life mm -hmm. but what are those experiences like i i wish we had somebody older here who was like wealthy but like i guarantee you if you pull like a 40 50 60 year old dude i'm 33 i'm decently wealthy millionaire before 35 I've like got my shit together traveled the world yeah when i think about when i think back about the things that mean the most to me it's never the new expensive computer i got it's never the new expensive car i got to drive it's never like the it's always going to be like the experiences i've had with other people especially people i love so like the experience of my wife mm -hmm. ex-girlfriends like never like the car that i drove or like the newest cell phone i have like it's the memories you make with other people i think and to some extent money can help you do that but to another extent money can help you do that i have my family um on my mom's side all came from cuba and i watch my my cuban family is so divided yeah on on one end i've got my god bless my love them my parents are amazing people i love them they love me but oh my god do they run the rat race <laughs> they're in a huge house they're both on social security my dad works full-time he collects disability and retirement from the air force and they're gonna work till they die They've already got like one foot in the grave and they're walking down working full time. And like, where's the happiness in that? Whereas if I look at my other, the other part of my Cuban family, half these people live in Hialeah. They live in these dog shit apartments Shut that flood. Hialeah. Yeah, every time it fucking rains, you've got cockroaches around. But man, every Friday, Saturday, they're having these huge parties. They're having barbecues. People are going over. They don't have expensive shit. Half these motherfuckers don't have phones, yeah. but they're all having fun times. They love each other. They're having like an amazing time every weekend. They've got friends, relationships. And, and I look at like both of these worlds and I'm like, fuck, like, well, who's winning at the end of the day because i on one end i see the american dream which is chasing the houses the money the pools the big lifestyle and then on the other hand i see like these like dumb hispanic people but like these guys are so much happier They're like what the fuck and i think even you guys are clued into that to some extent because i hear i hear it in your rhetoric and i know it's stripped down this idea of like western women and western lifestyles you know they have it more night. they have it more figured out in these other parts of the world and in these other parts of the world they're not running the same race that we run in the west but we're obsessed about getting like cars and houses and bitches so, so I just make one more point on this. Mm -hmm. So recently, right, I just bought a 2022 Rolls Royce Colonel truck, right? Yeah, I saw the story. Yeah. Not the flex or anything, but like that experience there. You know what I'm gonna do? I have one that I care about that watched me on the journey up. I'm gonna for a ride in it. And like my mom is like decided to come see it, whatever. I'm just saying like, yes, you're right. Chasing things like material stuff is kind of dumb. However, when you when you understand why you're doing it, it makes sense. So for example, giving people you care about, your family, your mom, your, you know, your your dad, your son, whatever. 
giving them those experiences will change your life. And also as well, let's say they get sick. My guy and I was sick a couple of years ago, right? And if I didn't have money to pay for his stuff, he'd be dead right now. So having the money, you need it, no matter what. It's like breathing, bro. Without money, you can't survive. So we're just saying, look, get as much money as possible to so help your family. But as well, you know what? Get experiences too. Traveling, meeting people. Without money, you can't do much in this, in this world. It's sad, but it's what it is. I don't think the red pill is as materialistic as you're making it out to I be. It's super materialistic. But... Myron's not materialistic at all, for example. He's off of it. Yeah, yeah, so um, I'm not even that materialistic. I was going to say, um, so... Um, my thing is, I've always heard this quote, and I, I love to quote it. It's, um, money doesn't buy happiness, but it's a damn good down payment. And what I mean by that is, for us, when we talk about money and becoming successful, we always say, you know, you got to get in shape, you got to get uh, get your money up, and then you got to understand female nature so that you can become a complete package, not to get women, but so that women are a byproduct of your success, so that you project yourself in the world in a certain way. And we're really big on guys having, like, a purpose, because if you have a purpose, then you're going to... Every purpose... Um, <clears throat> You have a direction and when you have a direction you have a destination when you have a destination you have something to work towards so my thing is i always tell guys your value is not determined by the amount of girls you can get your value is determined by how much value do you create for the world and then the women are going to be attracted to that so we tell guys like yo don't chase girls chase success and then the girls will follow after that right mm -hmm. so that's one thing and then like um my thing also is that me myself i'm a hardcore minimalist i mean i just brought back my 2002 honda you know i don't really own anything nice except for like one rolex that's a plain jane uh i don't spend it really any money except for like in the studio and then my real estate investments but i think it's important for guys to have the capability to have these experiences you're talking about so i agree with you 100 that life is built upon experiences yep. not materialistic things now for some people those experiences are, are centered around material things it depends on the person but my thing is i look at it like you need to have that money so that you have the capability to provide those experiences in the first place and um i know what you're saying like with tate and everything else like that that he might not be good a good example because um it's hollow he's telling guys get bugattis or whatever so i see your perspective on it but what i would say is that if he teaches a guy how to make money right and that guy just needed a kick in the ass to tell him hey get out there make some money start a side hustle etc well, then that person could decide what they want to do with the money, you know, because everyone makes money for different motivations. Some people do it for financial freedom. Some do it to flex. Some people do it to buy clothes or whatever it may be. And I think materialistic, materialistic things in general are stupid. But if it makes them happy, even for temporary, then, hey, man, do what you want to do. But I think it's important to have that money so you have the opportunity. It's a down payment towards that happiness to some degree is my thing. But I'm, my, I'm a big firm believer that you make the money not for girls, but so that you can go ahead and walk away from girls if they do some bullshit. It gives you an extra air of confidence because, you know, competence leads to accomplishments, which then leads to confidence. And that's the end product a lot of times for making the money. So I want the end product from making the money, not necessarily making the money to chase after the girls, if that makes sense. Sure. If it, and I guess we'll probably get into more of this in later topics, yeah. if that is the case. I think that's a good message, mm -hmm. right? The goal isn't to get certain things, it's to yeah. build yourself up to a position that those things come to you naturally. Yes, that's what you absolutely. want, right? that's what we say. And it's a better way to get those things too, because then you like you really deserve them, you really earn them, and you're gonna keep them, yeah. because you're not playing stupid games to get a hold of them. I do agree with that. Um, and like, I, I think that there are things you can spend money on to get good experiences, right? Yeah. So you guys have been a podcast for like a year and a half. Yeah. You have an amazing studio. You've had a lot of success. Like every dollar that you pour into this mm -hmm. is a sense of fulfillment, right? You're not just buying shit to have shit, yeah. right? But you're like actively improving on something that I imagine you guys both probably feel, everybody here probably feels really strongly about. So that's cool. I, I like, I support that. I think that's a good idea. But you got to admit, when you look at like the the plethora, especially around the Tate stuff, when I see all of the advertising for the Red Pill stuff, it doesn't feel like I hear about that that chasing of fulfillment very much, it all feels very materialistic. One thing Tate always says that a mm -hmm. dork who gets rich, like money just amplifies what you have. So a dork that gets super rich, that's why Bill Gates' wife ends up leaving and take half his money. Because you're just a I dork with a bunch of money. It doesn't make you a better man to have a shit ton of money. You need to be a better man overall, or else you're just a rich dork and everybody sure. looks down at you. But then it just, the only worries when you're tracking the metric, like, are you a better man because you have money? Or like you were saying, do you get more money because you end up being a better man? And the second one I think is okay. There are ways you can improve yourself to improve your life to get more money. But if the goal is the money, that's always going to be the goal. And when you attain it, like you're going to be lost. You I know? think foundationally, if your drive is going to be a set of money you, you're gonna win because at that point you're right for example we have a goal board in our, in our rooms uh, you know at least in my room and when i hit each goal it's like okay cool i feel happy but then i'm like what's next if you hit all your goals then what what do you do so in that sense like, i get what you're saying but if you're coming from it you know what i enjoyed the journey to get to where i'm at then it makes sense yeah another thing too is why i tell guys all the time like um 
you know, I've went on a whole huge rant on this as far as like guys like attributing their value to the, their notch counter getting girls is that it's a fleeting win because once you hit, you know, let's say 50 girls, oh, now I need 100. Once you hit 100, now I need 200. You know, 